All right. I guess I'm going to go over the method that I've been showing in the room for the last month or so on uh, how I go ahead and confirm whether or not I want to take an entry that was signaled by the trend line. And for those who don't know, I use an 18 tick rainfall chart that you see, the chart on my left here, for making confirmation. And I take the signal that comes from the 12 tick chart, which is on the right hand side. I wait for the cyan arrow to post on the right hand side of the chart. And when I get a signal like that that says, hey, heads up, there's an entry coming, I go ahead and I, I go over to the range bar chart on the left and I try to determine if this is an entry that I, in fact, want to take. Okay, so why don't we just skip over for now? <laughs> Friday's trading, because if you look at my chart, um, I'll go over chop zone with you after I show you how you determine whether or not you want to take the but Friday was nothing but chop, not chart there. So um, why don't we go ahead and just look at an earlier day on TF. Okay, start out, I guess, on Thursday. Um, so you're going to have to ignore the top label there that says Friday. Okay. Now on Thursday, we'll go to the beginning of the day in which I trade. I start at 8 a.m. I put caution up at 9.30, so 9.45. I'm kind of leery between those points. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, 8 o'clock, Thursday morning. We would have gotten a cyan arrow here around 8.35. Okay. So for the method of confirmation that I use, when you get the arrow, you come over here to the range bar chart and you look and see where are you on the range bar chart the moment you got the, the signal on the trend capture chart. Okay. Ignore the arrows that you see over here on my range bar confirmation chart. Those mean nothing. Look at the arrows that you get over here on the right hand side. Okay. So on this bar we got us a signal. We're going to come over here and we're going to take a look. And now what we want to look for is we want to know Two closed range bars in the time before we hit the cyan line or at the cyan bar. I just drew a cyan line right where you would have seen the cyan line. Okay, so we're going to look over on this chart and we're going to see where's that cyan line at. Okay, y'all see it here. So you got you would have gotten our signal that the short is coming over here. We would have had two closed range bars. We would have flipped through the cyan line. Um, we could have taken this as an entry based on the two closed bars. Okay. So if we're looking at that rule, that would have been a valid entry. Two closed bars in the same direction before the cyan line. We can take the entry at the cyan line. Um, the settings that I put into my trend capture chart and the tick bars that I chose, I had originally optimized this for doing 11 tick scalp with the possibility of trends coming along after that. Okay, so if we look at this, measure it out, it's very likely that that will measure out the pattern. Possible to hit the scalp. More than 21 ticks down to the bottom of that, so I can see where we would have we would have hit a target first of all. Okay, so then we would have ended up coming along with another pending signal here. Uh, when we 
got that, that next pending signal. I guess I need to put global cost. So you got a chance to see what it looks like for two range bars close in the same direction before you keep the trade. Now let's look here. Um, starting from here, as it's coming up, and trip here, it's going to signal right when it trips about there. It's going to signal you a time on arrow on the right. Okay. So your signal comes right here. It's going to be coming on this bar. Let me draw a plan in line where the line would have been planned. So we're, we're going to look over here on the left. That cyan line being there, we're going to look for two closed range bars in the same direction and we need to see how far away that would have been. So what you see me do in the room oftentimes is a market this box. Uh, Mike, I don't think I have a way to increase my volume. I'm sorry. You'll see me in the room drop this box to see where there is a, a set and bar for me. Okay. And I will set the bottom of that box to the bottom of the box. And we want to enter one tick past the close of the second bar, and this box signifies where the close of that second bar would have been to the top. You'll see me when it's close, I'll bother to draw a pink line one tick. There, if you show up. And um, right now it doesn't even look close. I want to be within my buffer zone, the pretty possible buffer zone, but five ticks are not. So I want to, I want the top plus one tick to be within five ticks or less of the sign line. I can't take that as an entry. So the next thing I do is I look to the left and I look at the opposing range bar, which you see this red range bar on the left. Let's say where is one tick past that? In this case, it's even further away. So using my method, unfortunately, even though you see a big trend there, we're going to end up passing on taking this trade. Okay. Now, one thing I just want to teach you is if you look for the boxes on the range bar chart, while that range bar was just painting, okay, it first started to backtrack a little bit. Now, if that had been backtracking, and you see me slide this down, it said backtrack and backtrack and backtrack, and, and it pulled down and pulled down to like there. Okay. And then it started to move back forward again. That would have been an excellent entry for sure, because that would have been like winding up the screen, letting you know, okay, when you do hit that, you're going to hit that thing with some force, and it's usually going to go as far as you see it, ended up going anyway or further. Uh, again, the morning is a squirrely time to be trading. Um, the reason I can see that this uh, kind of defied the, the laws of physics of the rules I use is the time of day. You're going to see gap stops or gap fills um, between 9.30 and 10 and 10.30 in the morning. So this bar kind of started at 9.30, and it just wanted to keep on going. And uh, so, but we stayed out of the mess. Um, it turns out it wouldn't have been a mess for us on this one. I don't know how else to increase the volume. Um, I can try moving my microphone around. Hopefully that's somewhat better. Okay. Um, so the, the two methods that I use are we're looking for one tick past the close of two range bars in the same direction. And if that's too far away, then we're looking for one tick past the opposing range bar. Let's look at this next trade that's come up here, um, signaled at the 943 bar. Okay, I'll go ahead and draw, draw a cyan line where it would have been a cyan line. Look over here on our chart over here. Okay. Um, let's have to look at when that signal would have came to. It's kind of hard looking back in time. 
Um, so, uh, so the, the, the reality is it wasn't going to have been signaled until the second range bar that you're looking at. So you see the second range bar here um, in a row. We're going to call that our first range bar. Okay. So we need this, the, this range bar and the one where you see the cyan line that's passing through it. We need both of those to close in the same direction to take this trade, or we need to look to the opposing range bar. You can just eyeball this and see that second bar closing is going to be plus one tick. That's going to be way too far away from the cyan. So we're going to look over to the opposing range bar. And you'll see me draw a black line there. Um, let me go draw that over. Um, I have two sets of charts to try and make it easier for me to draw on camera. Um, I'm going to have to change a moment here. I'm going to draw it over here. Bear with me for one second. I'm going to draw it off camera so I can change its color. Cyan at the moment, and the green stop is changed back to black. See in my method, or you hear us talking, um, the black line is always, I, uh, you hear us in my method, and, and the black line is one tick past the closing range bar. Okay, so you can see the pink line, if uh, I bother to draw the pink line, let me draw it for you here since we're kind of doing this for people that may be new. Um, so first going to look cyan, let me change its property to fuchsia or something for you. So you can see that fuchsia line, that's going to be too far away. Alright, so I'm just, I'm just going to lift it off so it doesn't cloud things up. Alright. Now what we want to do is we want to measure how many ticks is it going to be from the, the um, cyan line that's telling you heads up there's an entry coming to the black line. It's four, so it's within it's within the buffer zone that uh, you may also hear us talk about. So using my method, you're going to be entering late, so to speak from when you see a signal come, a cyan line, oftentimes you may enter late, but what you'll see will happen in the long run is it's going to keep you from entering more losing trades than winning trades. And uh, this one here, we could take this entry, but we got to take it at this black line. You're going to look over here. If you followed that and you followed your uh, trend line, um, you know, oops, I'm click on the ruler. So if you followed the trend line here, then you went down to the flip. Okay, well, you're going to end up getting out of the cyan. So this still would have been would have been a winner. Um, looks like, and if we follow my other rules, we're going to even end up in this trade because my rules are signaling don't even take this trade. So I guess you could hypothetically, you could have ridden this even further down. If you go ahead and my rules say don't take the trade, you may want to not stop out at the cyan line. You may want to take the thing in and keep writing it down. Okay. Um, so I've gone over the two bars closed in the same direction 
It's not very often you're going to have two bars closing in the same direction, okay? Um, but it is one of the rules, and some days, it just depends on how things paint out, some days you're going to rely on that more than one tick past the opposing bar. So I've shown you how to determine what is the opposing range bar, one tick past that. Um, now, before you use either of those, you want to make sure you're not in what we call a chop zone. Okay. Um, Mike has a question, 1260 with entry short. 1260. Um, the price 1260. Well, looks like I marked it at 12.59.9, Mike. Um, I get to be precise with, I'm going to click on the range bar. The low of that range bar was 12.60. We needed to go one tick past that low. Okay. So 12.59, that's where I believe I have my line set. I don't know. Too many charts flickering. That's the problem with the camera, and I touch the <laughs> I touch the charts that are on camera, and they just go crazy. Not past the black line. The black line accounts for the one tick. Okay. Same with the pink line. So that would have been a short one tick past the opposing range bar. Uh, again, I showed you one tick past the second close range bar. Um, if you need me to show you another example of one tick past the second close range bar, speak up and we'll try and find some. While I'm waiting for anyone to speak up on that, um, let me show you chop zone here. Okay. We had a chop zone show up on Thursday. Um, you see it here. Now, let me try and make this chart to where you can see the chop zone. You see on the left, on the range bar chart on the left, you look at this chop zone, and uh, the black arrows are pointing to the range bars that I consider to be inside of the chop zone. Okay then the blue arrow is pointing to the range bar that is exiting the chop zone. And to be considered exiting the chop zone, you are needing two range bars closed in the same direction or more, but it has to have closed outside. The last one has to have closed outside of that yellow chop zone. How do I determine the chop zone? I determine the chop zone based on three or more bars. Here you see these, this first bar red, second bar green, third bar red. So once we've gone a down close, up close, and a down close, and we look across the top here of this first down close and the second down close, if six ticks or less, is the difference, then that's a chop zone. Okay. Now the fourth bar comes. That fourth bar comes. We look at the bottom side. If they are, if those two bottoms are within six ticks or less of each other, that's chop zone. Okay. Now you see that fourth bar closed up. Then you have another bar that looked like it was going to be closing up. Eventually it did. Okay. So it exited that chop zone, and that's when I say you're free and clear to take what we call, I call an add-on trade, where that green line is. Um, and uh, you're definitely good to go to take the first reversal after that, okay, even though it seems to be passing back through the area that was the chop zone. And um, I know we've got Daryl's great new... Um, chop filter. Not sure how much longer anyone's going to want to use the method that I'm using because 
you gotta say this chop filter is looking awesome. Okay, but I have noticed a pattern that when leaving the chop zone, um, there seems to oftentimes be a reversal that comes soon after that. And due to the nature of my method, sometimes your confirmation comes so late, you don't get to get in on that trend. And uh, I am considering, if I keep using this method, of just accepting the next signal um, flip if uh, you see his historical arrow plot. See the red arrow up there? That red arrow plots. As soon as that plots, I think I want to start taking the first reversal out of the chop zone. Okay. How do I determine how big to make this chop zone? I choose on the top of the highest bar, I, I make the, the box six ticks above that. On the lowest bar, six ticks below that. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. And then um, let's say this fifth bar with the blue arrows showing you that it exited. Let's say that bar like stalled four or five ticks below where it closed and it reversed on us. Okay. So let's therefore it's going to set a new high for that chop zone. Then we would literally stretch the box six ticks above that. And therefore, if you look and you see on Friday's chop zone, that chop zone got taller and taller and taller, you know, but the reality was it just was a whole lot of chop on Friday. And, um, you know, Jim, I, uh, I don't know exactly how they have programmed the new chop zone indicator or chop indicator. And so I can't tell you if it matches my method exactly, but I can tell you that it's, um, oh, hold on one second. My granddaughter just came in for some help. Okay. 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 okay, I'll help. I'll do that in just a moment. Okay, so um, anyways, I love the new chop zone. Uh, well, Lisa, Lisa's only two, can't talk yet, but uh, Lizzie, she's a little older. She's seven. <laughs> we might be able to get her trading soon. <laughs> Once the new trend catcher is uh, working with a signal arrow, I bet you I could get Lizzie to be trading. So. All right. So I think I've explained chop zone to you. Have I explained chop zone well enough? Are there any other questions on chop zone? And are there any questions on anybody still not understanding one tick past the opposing range bar or one tick past two closed range bar? Um, I want to point out if you're using this method and the two closed range bars, it is important that you don't just give up, you know, my chart here, we're looking at past history, okay? When you're looking at past history, it's easy to see how things developed right away, okay? But here, like, let's look at, I just backed up a tiny bit, and this is a great example. I'm going to click on this um, box that I've drawn there. Okay, we had a, a range bar closing in the up position, okay, and it caused a, a pending entry to show up over here on the 12 tick chart. Okay, so you can, at the beginning, until you just start to learn to look at the chart and recognize it, you can draw that 18 tick box at the same size as your range bar. Put the bottom of it where that new range bar opens up. Okay, and at first, that range bar went up a couple ticks, okay, but then it started to back up, and now you watch, and I just start to pull this pink box down, it went down a tick, goes down a tick, goes down a tick, goes down a tick, and what's actually happening is this is winding up the spring, and actually, 
it may turn into a really good reversal. And so it keeps going down, keeps going down, keeps going down. And now, you know, if it stopped right there, it's so close, it's within the buffer zone that you hear us talk about if you look over, look there. And if it then stopped pulling back and shot on forward, it would have been an awesome entry. And it would have been power in that because it's like winding up a spring and then you pull the trigger on the wind up toy or whatever it is, a car, or winding up a BB gun. And uh, the tighter you wind the spring, the farther things seem to go. And that's kind of what a pullback is. But sometimes when you wind up the spring too much, this spring got wound up too much. So much so the range bar closed in the down direction, canceled your entry, so you don't end up taking that entry, you see? Canceled it, and you never ended up into that trade because the spring broke, and there was no more energy left in that spring to propel the market forward is a way to think about it. And you see, it just started falling all the way back. Okay. So that's why I use that little box is to try and figure out, is this going to be a good entry? And at first it looks like, oh, you know, well, look how far away two closed range bars is and look how far away one past the opposing is. And you don't just walk away from your computer, you say, oh, let's watch it develop. And it's kind of pulling back, pulling back. Okay. So when it's within five ticks of that area, that's when I start getting excited and think, hey, maybe this will be a good trade. And sometimes it just pulls back and breaks the spring and the rubber bone and all that. Okay, so that explains maybe a little more detail on the two closed range bars. You got the one, the uh, one tick past the opposing range bar, that would have been here. You can see that would have been too far away. There's your chop zone. And I guess we can wind this up now unless anybody wants to type out any questions for me to try to answer for them. I guess that's uh, it. Maybe I explained it well or there's nobody listening. <laughs> but um, what, what do I use the 30 minute chart for? Oh, okay, Jim. You know, Jim, I, I just started to put the 30 minute chart there only on Friday or Thursday. And uh, I'm just using that for curiosity. I, I put that up there and I put up a. Um, time and sales here, which, you know, there's, it's the weekend, so there's no time and sales really happening. But um, I've learned a few things that are fascinating. Time and sales, if you start to see that the contract sizes go from one and two to five or more, and if you start to see the, the blocks, it starts painting the whole background green or red, um, it's an indicator that it, usually it's going to keep pounding that way for a little while, either way. Yes, Marilyn, Marilyn put this 30-minute uh, up there. She likes to keep an eye on that. And um, I just want to uh, have some more information, help me maybe choose, you know. If, if there's a time I'm going to be quitting trading for the day, maybe I want to look at that and see, hey, you know, we've had two doji bars for, you know, the last two hours have been doji bars, and uh, I kind of wanted to quit early today. Maybe that's a good indicator. It's a good time to quit early. Maybe there were two doji bars and are not ready to quit, and now all of a sudden you see two green down bars. Okay. Maybe I want to make sure I stick around for a while. I do want to be like Marilyn. <laughs> I'm not joking when I said in the room the other day, I said, I want to be like you when I grow up, Marilyn. <laughs> Uh, I think that the good thing about the trend catcher um, and the way they're making it even better now, which you guys got a demo of before this, it's a great way for a beginner, I think, to get started making money sooner, feeling confident enough to start trading live money, make money sooner, and uh, then don't stop learning. Go and learn the methods that Marilyn has learned. And... Uh, 
and learn how then you can actually put both of these together. So <laughs> somebody says, I think her and Lori were trading cakes. <laughs> so that's for sure. All right, well, why don't we wrap this up so that so they can stop the recording unless there's any other one last chance for a question. <laughs> Marilyn says they were trading cakes to go with their tinfoil hats. <laughs> Very good. So, or the signal. Oh, <laughs> I see. Jim, yeah, to receive the trend catcher signal through their tinfoil hat. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes, Francis, um, I did cover entries the way in which I do it. Um, I'll just very quickly, I'll recite the rules real fast. First, very first thing, make sure you're not in a chop zone. Um, that seemed always obvious to me before, but um, check, make sure you're not in a chop zone first. Then real quick, you look and see, will the second range bar close uh, in the same direction before you reach the cyan line? If so, you can take the cyan line as an entry. If the second range bar is going to close within five ticks after the cyan line, you can take where it closes as your entry. But then look to your left. If two range bars closing in the same direction is going to be just too far away or is going to be in the buffer zone, then look to your left to the opposing range bar. And if one tick past the opposing range bar is any closer to the cyan line, you can take that entry. If it's before the cyan line, you can take the cyan line as your entry. If it's on the cyan, you can take the cyan line as your entry. Um, if either of your signals, the two closed range bars or the opposing range bar are before the cyan, don't get in early, wait for the cyan line. Okay, but if either of them are not before the cyan, take the closest one within five ticks of the cyan line and you'll be good to go. I think that wraps it up, makes it very simple. Um, you just need to practice it a little bit, but um, this may all just go into the history panels now because their new trend catcher sure seems to be working so good. I hope you guys will play with that this weekend as well, if not just that. I don't know that you really even need to learn my method anymore. So, all right. Um, whoever's recording this, I guess we can end this.